So in this video, we're going to be looking at ionic charges of simple monatomic ions, of molecular ions, as well as transition metal ions as well. We're going to use that information to form a formula for a compound itself, using those ions reacting together, and then we're also going to name it as well. Now, starting off, looking at our simple ions itself, if we're looking at individual atoms being turned into ions, we know between groups 1 and 3, we form positively charged ions, and between groups 5 and 6, we form negatively charged ions. Now, you might have come across this before at GCSE, where you refer to the positive ions as being cations, and the negative ions being anions itself. Now, looking at groups 1, 2, and 3, right, why do they actually form positive ions? Just a quick recap. Well, we know, let's say, if something is going to be in group 2, Two, let's say and we'll go with an example which is going to be magnesium we know magnesium has two electrons in its outer shell it has two electrons in its valence shell and it reacts to form a stable full outer shell now it can do that in two ways it can either lose two electrons or it can gain six electrons and we normally go with the easiest way which in this case is to lose two electrons itself and so magnesium will form a plus two charged ion and so what we end up with is group two because they all have the same number of electrons in the outer shell we know that we end up with two plus charge for all of those atoms itself forming ions so yeah if i look at group three you got three electrons in the outer shell you form a three plus uh, ion itself if i were to look at groups five six and seven right they're slightly different because in the case of let's say we'll go with oxygen as an example we know we've got six electrons in its outer shell because it's in group six and rather than actually losing six it's going to gain two to form that full octet itself and so if it gains two electrons the overall charge becomes two minus and so you end up with all two minus for an oxide ion itself right so there's our first part done in terms of predicting the actual charge of an ion looking at what group it's in now you might have noticed that i skipped out three uh, kind of areas on the periodic table one of them being the noble gases which of course we've got a full octet a full outer shell of electrons our valence shell is actually full so we don't actually lose or gain any electrons we also skipped out group four which of course doesn't actually form ions typically and then the final part which is this chunk in the periodic table over here our d block elements right these actually have variable oxidation states you can end up with different charges for the ions let's look at an example let's see if i were to deal with copper and then we've got copper one plus and then let's see if i were to compare that to something like copper two plus copper can actually exist as a one plus ion or a two plus ion as well it's got variable oxidation states and we can actually represent that oxidation state with a roman numeral in some brackets so let's see if i'm talking about copper one plus i'd say i've got copper and then i've got one in in brackets in roman numerals copper two plus i would end up with a two in brackets in roman numerals as well and it goes all the way up from one to ten normally uh, most things exist in a plus two oxidation state and they exist as two plus ions itself as well and there's our ionic charges for our simple atomic ions done as well as our transition metal ions as well what about the more complicated molecular ions well here i've got every single molecular ion you need to be able to remember in terms of the name and in terms of the formula in a level chemistry for ocr now starting off right in terms of our one plus ion that we need to remember we've got ammonium ions over here which actually comes from the compound ammonia which you remember from the harbor process it's going to be nh3 and normally what happens is is they gain a h plus and so you end up forming nh4 plus ions itself as well now normally this goes at the starting section of your names and everything else is going to come at the end of your naming system for your compounds now looking at this right one minus now if i were to look at hydroxide nitrate and hydrogen carbonate right the next trend that we can actually look at is is if we have a compound if we have a molecular ion in this case that consists of more than one atom and normally if it's attached to something like oxygen like how you can see with nitrate hydrogen carbonate carbonate sulfate dichromate and phosphate if you've got let's say an atom like nitrogen in there we know it starts with nitre and then it ends in eight because it contains an oxygen atom in there as well at least one oxygen atom in there so in that case we've got a nitrate ion this trend right follows through with all of these molecular ions apart from one which is hydroxide and hydroxide 
peroxide is going to be the only one which ends in ide itself and that's something that you need to remember so yeah we've got hydroxide nitrate and hydrogen carbonate and then we've got for our two minus ions carbonate sulfate and dichromate again they all end in eight because they don't just contain carbon sulfur and chromium they contain uh carbon and oxygen sulfur and oxygen chromium and oxygen as well again phosphate here three minus po4 three minus is how i remember it and you can see again you've got phosphorus and you've got oxygen as well now what actually makes that different right what makes right phosphate different to phosphide what makes sulfate different to sulfide well if i were to look at sulfide right because it ends in ide right remember apart from hydroxide you know it's going to contain the single individual element itself so think sulfur it's going to be in group six gains two electrons it's going to be two minus so that's sulfide as an ion if i were to look at sulfate because it ends in eight and not ide we know that it contains sulfur and oxygen and so we know it's going to be sulfate so4 two minus itself that's how we tell the difference between sulfide and sulfate look at another example let's say if i were to look at phosphide and phosphate well phosphorus we know that's going to be in group five itself and we know it's going to gain three electrons and so we end up with p and then it's going to be three minus and then if i were to look at phosphate right we would end up with of course because it ends in eight it's going to be p o and then it's going to be four three minus itself as well the difference between sulfide sulfate and then phosphide phosphate and the concept applies in all sorts of places as well the only one it doesn't apply to is hydroxide which of course is going to be oh minus it's going to have oxygen in there as well so yeah, moving on then, let's have a look at writing ionic formula. Now, starting off, I've got aluminium sulfide and gallium sulfate. And to actually write the actual formula, to find the formula, I need to first find the charges. I need to swap my charges, drop them down, and then I can simplify it as well. So you might have done something similar at GCSE. But let's look at the first one, aluminium sulfide. Find the charges, find the ions that we're actually dealing with. Aluminium's in group three, so it's going to be Al3+. plus. Sulfur is going to be sulfide so we know it's just going to be sulfur on its own that's two minus because it's in group six and then what i'm going to do is is i'm going to take aluminium and i'm going to take sulfur this two i'm going to drop it down and swap it to aluminium over here and then aluminium i'm going to drop that down that three and then swap it to sulfur over here and so what i end up with is al2 s3 as my answer that is the formula of aluminium sulfide now again how is this going to be different to gallium sulfate well we're dealing with a different ion right the positive ion in this case which we know is going to be the cation from gcse so we know it's going to be gallium and it's in group three so it's three plus and then sulfate because it ends in eight i know i've got sulfur and oxygen and the one that we need to remember right our molecular ion is going to be so42 minus sulfate from our table that you saw previously and again we're going to drop and swap it again we don't need to simplify these two examples we'll come on to that later but again let's uh, take that gallium we're going to drop and swap this two so that two goes there and then i'm going to have sulfate which is so4 and that three is going to come here now there's a problem with this because that looks like it says we've got so 43 so to make it clearer for people reading your work you need to put a bracket around the molecular ion which is sulfate to show i've got three lots of sulfate there so i end up with ga2 and then open bracket so4 close bracket and then three there's gallium sulfate itself so yeah moving on feel free to have a go at the following examples here i've got six examples for you to find the formula of and uh, pause the video once you're ready to move on uh, you can resume and we will uh, continue so yeah starting off with the first one i've got magnesium which is going to be mg2 plus because it's in group two and then i've got bromine which is bromide one minus now of course right the whole objective of this is is you need to get this neutral and you've got to think if i've got two lots of positive charge and i've got one lot of negative charge how can i make that balance i can times the number of bromides by two or right it's systematic for me i just use a swap drop and simplify method so i end up with of course mg 
which is going to be two plus and we know we're going to have one lot of it and then we're going to have two lots of bromine in this case the next one i've got potassium oxide potassium we know it's going to be k plus oxide is o2 minus and it's going to be the same thing again but i'm going to flip it so i end up with of course two lots of potassium and then oxide so there's potassium oxide and then sodium nitride so sodium is going to be na plus nitride ends in ide it's going to be three minus and then if i were to swap it i end up with na that three comes over here and then i end up with nitride there as well there's sodium nitride so there's the first three done nice straightforward and easy from gcse now looking at the next one i've got magnesium oxide which is mg2 plus i've got oxide which is going to be uh two minus over here as well so magnesium is two plus oxide is two minus i swap and drop it and i end up with mg two or two which is actually going to be wrong now the reason why is because here this is where the simplify part comes from we need to simplify it by finding the lowest common multiple by dividing by two in this case and we end up with just mgo itself and that's correct there now what about the next one i've got ammonium so again an ion that we need to remember which is nh4 plus again we need to check the sulfur it ends in eight so we know it's not going to be sulfide where it's just s2 minus it's going to be so42 minus Minus. and of course we swap and drop it and we end up with the following of two lots of ammonia which is nh4 and then two and then i end up with sulfate there as well there's the next one done what about this one over here a bit trickier but you've got to remember if you're given the oxidation state if you're given the charge of iron you need to be able to use that so it's not going to be iron just on its own we know the charge of it it's going to be three plus in this case and nitrate of course we have to remember it ends in eight as well so it's not nitride it's going to be no3 minus and of course we would end up with in this case fe one lot of it and then we would end up with three lots of no3 itself so in this case you can see the three comes outside the bracket as well and there's the last one done so moving on i want you to have a go at the following where you're working in the reverse direction where you're actually naming these compounds as well so again feel free to pause the video and have a go at the following so yeah starting off with the first one aluminium we've got over here that's the metal and then again we've got oxygen on its own there's nothing else attached to it so we know of course it's just going to be oxide nice and simple the metal normally comes first and then we have the non-metal coming last so positive ion first negative ion comes last so there's the first one done aluminium oxide what about the next one we've got sodium and then it's not going to be sulfate here because it's only sulfur with no oxygen attached to it it's going to be sulfide itself so we've got here sodium and then it's going to be sulfide what about the next one so again if we split up the ions the positive ion in this case is going to be barium the metal in group two and then the negative ion it's not going to be sulfide it's going to end in eight in this case because we've got something called an oxy anion it's a molecular ion that contains oxygen so we say we've got sulf because it's got sulfur in it and then it ends in eight because we've got oxygen attached to that um, itself so there's the third one done what about the next one then well over here we've got lithium and then the sulfate so again pretty straightforward if you've got the last one And then the next one, we've got here copper chloride. Now this one's quite tricky because it doesn't actually give us the oxidation state, but we can actually work that out. So if I look at chlorine, right, we know that has to be Cl minus, Cl minus. So that must mean the remaining copper, that copper to balance it out, to make a neutral overall charge, we know it must be two plus. Now if it's two plus, remember you need to use the Roman numerals with a two in some brackets. And what you can put for the name is, is we got copper and then in brackets after the copper put two and then you got copper two chloride which of course is different to copper one chloride itself looking at the next one i can see here i've got ammonia as an ion it's quite hard to see because there's quite a lot going on there but there's ammonia and then i've also got the carbonate ion which we know is two minus itself so in this case what would we call it well the positive ion is ammonium and then the negative ion is going to be carbonate and so our substance in this case is called ammonium carbonate and there's that one done there 